Good day folks! This video will be the first of its series of tutorials. These tutorials has been prepared for everyone and much more easy to understand for beginners, the basics to advanced concepts related to Java programming language. Before we start, this is to remind that I assume that you are already aware about the idea and the purpose of computer programs and programming. Now, let's start by giving an overview of Java. Java programming language was originally developed by Sun Microsystems, which was initiated by James Gosling and released in 1995 as a core component of Sun Microsystems Java platform. The latest release of the Java Standard Edition as this video is created is Java SE8. With the advancement of Java and its widespread popularity, multiple configurations were built to suit various types of platforms like J2EE for enterprise applications and J2ME for mobile applications. The new J2 versions were renamed as Java SE, Java EE, and Java ME respectively. Java is guaranteed to be right once, run anywhere. I will be describing Java on every aspect of programming language. Java is object-oriented. In Java, everything is an object. Java can be easily extended since it is based on the object model, platform independent, and like many other programming languages including C and C++, when Java is compiled, it is not compiled into platform specific machine, rather into platform independent bytecode. This bytecode is distributed over the web and interpreted by the virtual machine, JVM, on whichever platform it is being run on. Java is simple. Java is designed to be easy to learn. If you understand the basic concept of OOP Java, it would be easy to master. Secure. With Java's secure feature, it enables to develop virus-free, tamper-free systems. Authentication techniques are based on the public key encryption. Java is architecture neutral. Java compiler generates an architecture neutral object file format, which makes the compiled code executable on many processors with the presence of Java runtime system. Java is portable. Being architecture neutral and having no implementation dependent aspects of the specification makes Java portable. Robust. Java makes an effort to eliminate error prone situations by emphasizing mainly on compile time error tracking and runtime tracking. Java is multi-threaded. With Java's multi-threaded feature, it is possible to write programs that can perform many tasks simultaneously. This design feature allows the developers to construct interactive applications that can run smoothly. Interpreted Java bytecode is translated on the fly to native machine instructions and is not stored anywhere. The development process is more rapid and analytical since the linking is an incremental and lightweight process. Java is a high performance language. With the use of the just-in-time compilers, Java enables high performance. Distributed Java is designed for the distributed environment of the internet. And the last one is dynamic. Java is considered to be more dynamic than C or C++ since it is designed to adapt to an evolving environment. Java programs can carry extensive amount of runtime information that can be used to verify and resolve accesses to objects on runtime. Okay, let's give a short history of Java. James Gosling initiated Java Language Project in June 1991 for use in one of his many set-top box projects. The language, initially called Oak after an oak tree that stood outside Gosling's office, also went by the name Green and ended up later being renamed as Java. Sun released the first public implementation as Java 1.0 in 1995. It promised write once, run anywhere, providing no cost runtimes on popular platforms. On 13th of November 2006, Sun released much of Java's free and open source software under the terms of the GNU GPL General Public License. Tools you will need. In this tutorial, we'll be needing either Linux or Windows. On my case, I am using Windows. Then, a Java Development Kit 8 and a Microsoft Notepad 
or any other text editor. Java SE is freely available from the link found in the description below. You can download the version based on your operating system. So here we go. Let's proceed to the download link. And we are here on the page and then let's first accept the license agreement. And then look for the installer which is appropriate to our operating system and here we have Windows 64 bit. Okay, downloading. So the J JDK here we have 8 U121 oh, Windows for Windows 64 bit. After that, we can now open the the installer, and then just follow the instruction given by the installer. Okay, let's click next, and then just next. So the installation is in progress. And then as is for the installation lo uh, location and then installing so yes here as you can see in the installation there is this uh, somewhat advertisement showing that around 3 billion devices are running in Java so it only speaks that how big is uh, the Java in the industry okay so there we already installed it and then the next is setting up the path so uh, on my case uh, I already placed it on my environment variables and you can follow this step and for the Linux same thing yeah uh, you can have uh, you can use bash and then use the following instruction and for the Java editors, we have Notepad, NetBeans, or uh, you can use Eclipse. Okay, so let me show you. I'll be using Eclipse on my uh, Java programming. So first, let's proceed to the download link for Eclipse. So www.eclipse.org. And then, as you can see on the right side, there is this down download button click on that and then you will be preceded into the page and then you can see the get eclipse neon and then download the 64 bit because my system is uh, on 64 bit then click download and just wait And then right after the download, uh, you'll uh, let's open now the installer, and then just follow the instruction. And then choose uh, Eclipse ID for Java developers, and then install. And then just uh, accept the agreement. So it is now installing. So uh, b by the way, the installation folder you can choose um, a different uh, location. Uh, I just uh, 
use the default location uh, proposed by the installer and then right after that here we go we're now launching the application then choose a workspace and for mine it is in my local folder now we are now loading and opening the application so first let me show you how to create a java project in eclipse go to file new java project and then a window is displayed asking for a project name and on the jre section just below you are asked to specify the runtime and on this case it is java se 1.8 so if you have multiple runtime and you wish to use a different one then you can change it by selecting one selecting on this drop down menu after you can now click the finish or the next button clicking the next button will show you the properties of the project the source projects libraries and other libraries if you wish to use some libraries then let's click finish the working environment is displayed then with the project explorer at the left side you can see the project folder with a subfolder um, source which will contain our source code let's then add a class on it and then a window will be displayed yes and asking for the package where the class to be placed and asking for the name of the class if we try to empty the package we will then see a warning stating that it is it discouraged using of default package so let's make a package folder and on it and on it is a java class name main because we are creating a main class it would be easier to check the box for public static void main so that it will create a function main automatically click finish and here we have it the main that java with the main function generated so let's test it let's try to create a code for displaying a string system that out that print line and let's print uh, print hello world after let's run it and we should be able to see a return on the console just below the string hello world so that's it we uh, tested the environment and it works and that's all I hope you find this video useful and thank you very much and have a good day